Amen. You're back again, talking about obedience to obey is better than sacrifice. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And who doesn't want to eat the good of the land? We all want to eat the good of the land. Not just we are on our own, but even if we have children, if we have family, if we have friends, everyone connected to us and with us, we want them to have the good of the land. So we are obeying on our own behalf and on behalf of everyone connected to us, that these blessings may extend to them, the blessings of obedience. Hallelujah. And we see it is important and very critical for everyone that wants to follow Jesus to obey. When he called his disciples when he was here on earth, he told them, come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And we see this man living what they were doing and obeying that voice that said, come. And we see them following Jesus. And we see what Jesus did in their lives and for their lives. Hallelujah. And so when Jesus asks you to obey, he's not asking you uh, just for nothing. It's because there's something great and something big that he wants to do with you, in you, and for you. So you just dare believe and obey. We have seen that when we obey, we are saying, yes, Lord, I believe your word. Yes, Lord, I have faith in that word. I have faith in that voice. This man did not know Jesus, but he came and passed along their path, and he told them, follow me. And they abandoned all that they were doing, and they followed him. They didn't know what lay in store for them, but they obeyed God. And the beauty about it is that God never left them at any time. Even when they faced challenges and difficult moments in their lives, he was there to help them. And so we are saying he will not leave you. If you suffer because of the gospel, if you suffer as a result of your obedience, just know that there's a crown of glory waiting for you. So it is better to obey God than man. They said so, Peter said so. And he said, would rather obey God than obey man. So I'm um, directing these words to all those that have been called of God, all the ministers of the gospel, hallelujah. You'd rather obey God, stand up and speak as his oracle. Let God use you. Let God anoint you. Let his word have power in your mouth. Hallelujah. For it is God standing behind his word to confirm it. Fear no man. Speak the truth. Even if it is to the authority, speak the truth. We need to hear the voice of God in our land of Kenya. So men and women of God, stand in your position and declare what the Lord says. Rebuke where you're supposed to rebuke. Hallelujah. Comfort where you're supposed to comfort. Counsel where you're supposed to counsel. Guide where you're supposed to. As the Lord gives you the utterance, so do not fear. Obey the Lord. We want to see goodness and mercy in this land of Kenya. We want our children, our young people, to enjoy the goodness of the Lord in this land of Kenya. So we are standing up and we are saying we are obeying on behalf of the future generation. We are obeying God. We want goodness to be filled in this land. We want our young people to enjoy the goodness of the Lord. And these are our children and our grandchildren. Hallelujah. So we have a part to play. And the part to play is to obey God. There is an incident in the Bible where the disciples were at sea. And the storms and the winds were against them. And we see Jesus coming and commanding the storm, commanding the wind, commanding the waters to cease. And they stopped and the wind stopped and the waters subsided and the waves uh, subsided. And the disciples were in amazement. And the Bible says in Mark 5, 4, 41, and they were filled with great awe and feared exceedingly and said one to another, who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? 
Why did they obey him? Because he obeyed the Father. Hallelujah. And so there is transference of obedience. When you obey the Father, your situations will obey you. Your wind will obey you. Your storm will obey you. Your, the demons will obey you. You will tell them, come out, and they will come out. Sickness and disease will obey you. Nature will obey you. So obey God. Hallelujah. And you will see the circle replicated. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is what we want. We want to see God manifest himself in our land. And so let us rise up and obey God so that the wind and the storm can obey us too. Hallelujah. So when we say sickness and disease be healed, healing can happen. But it will never happen if we are not in obedience. So the challenge is on us to obey our God. He that has called us to be co-workers with him. Hallelujah. And what a life shall we have. It shall be great and marvelous in our sight. And we will glorify him and say, hallelujah. It is a good thing to serve the Lord. So God bless you as you rise up and say, I choose to obey that rather than sacrifice. Amen. Amen. It's very true. Our obedience will cause us to inherit the promises of God. So we choose to obey our Lord. We choose to obey his voice. We choose to obey his servants. And we shall inherit all the promises that he has spelled out for us and for, our, for those who are close to us. When you look at Joshua and Caleb and the other spies, they were sent to spy the promised land. Joshua and Caleb didn't see the challenges, the giants. In them, they had faith God had promised to give them the promised land. So they never saw what their eyes were seeing they chose to stick, to obey the word of God, that they will get the promised land. So, and that's why they took back a positive report. While the other spies disobeyed, or rather forgot the promise of God, and that is disobedience, and took a negative report. When we look at Joshua chapter 5, verse 6, uh, we learn that all those who had been delivered from Egypt, from slavery, along the way they disobeyed God. They forgot what God had told him. And that caused a delay. And eventually, to them, they completely missed out on the promise of God. Yet told that the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of God. So they missed out simply because after seeing all what God had done to deliver them, after hearing the instructions through Moses from God, they forgot, they disobeyed. So what happened? It delayed their achievement or their acquirement of the promise, and eventually they missed out because of their disobedience. So our disobedience will delay our promises. Our disobedience will cause us to miss what God has laid out for us in this life. But when we obey, when we choose strictly to follow, to obey, to adhere to what he has said to us, then obstacles will be leveled. Challenges, God will help us to overcome. And eventually, we are going to receive what he has promised in our lives. So my dear viewer, do not delay your blessings by becoming disobedient. Allow God to fulfill his promises in your life as you continue obeying his word. We've been told by my sister Helen that even those small things that God wants us to obey, let us do so. 
as he graduates us to heights, to higher levels, to higher blessings. We have to grow obeying him day by day. We have to choose. Let's not take shortcuts. Tutapotea na tutakosa baraka ambazo tumiahidiwa na mungu. So ili kupokea ahadi ambazo mungu ametupa, ebu, tukubali tu. Tukubali kuwa watifu ili tuweze kumiliki hizi baraka. Na tumai sisi zote, hakuna mtu atake kumiliki baraka katika hizi hii maisha. Baraka ambazo mungu ametuwekea. He says he has a plan to prosper us. He wants to give us hope. Who wants to live a hopeless life? None of us. So which, when we choose to obey, then God will fulfill all these promises to us and to our children and to their children's children. So let us aspire to be obedient. Let us not delay our blessings. Let us choose to be obedient. Like the children of Israel, 40 years going round and round, the wilderness. Wilderness um, is hopelessness. When they left Egypt, they had hope, hey, we are going to the promised land. But along the way, wakasahau kuti. Therefore, ni kuzunguka tu, kuzunguka tu, hawafiki kwa ahadi. That was not the will of God. It's because they disobeyed. So let's aspire simply to be obedient. Simply to see things through the eyes of God. See things through his word. And by so doing, that is faith in him, and that's what he wants from us, and eventually we shall possess, we shall receive, we shall live that life, we shall be saying, hallelujah, God has done it for me, hallelujah, I've seen God in my life. So stay blessed and see God in your life. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Luke 11:28. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Niheri wale na wamebarikiwa wale ambao wanasikia neno la mungu na wanaliti. Wakati mungu anakuita mbarikiwa, unakuanga umebarikiwa. And no one can curse you. Lakini ili tufike hapo kwa kupokea baraka za mwenyezi mungu, then we have to obey him. Ikiwa tutatembea na yeye. Na kama vile nilisema mambo ya kama vile sister Sarah amesema obeying God in small matters inakuanga an essential step ya ku receive God's greatest blessings. Kwa hivyo hayo mambo madongo hapo unapuuza hapo kanisani hapo pengine Mungu anaongea unapuuza pengine mchungaji wako anaongea unapuuza na unajua wakati mchungaji wako anaongea Mungu anaongea kumpitia Kwa hivyo anakuambia fanya hivi. Pengine wewe unaona ni kitu kidogo na unapuuza, hiyo ndiyo itarudi kuletea shida. Kwa sababu hata hicho kitu kidogo unasikia kiko na baraka zake. Na hicho ndicho kitafanya uinuliwe na Mungu mpaka akufikishe mahali anataka ufike. Kama utafika mahali Mungu anataka ufike katika haya maisha. Ni lazima uwe mtifu. Wakati when we obey God, we will never be disappointed. Isaiah 49:23 nasema no one who waits for him shall be disappointed. Na hatumngoji tukishughulika na mambo yetu tu. Tunamngoja Bwana tukifanya mapenzi yake na tukimtumikia. Because at the end of the day wakati Mungu atarudi haya matendo ambayo tunafanya hii kazi yake ambayo tunafanya hiyo ndio ambayo itatufuata ndio matendo itatufuata. Sio yale yetu tunafanya na huko nje. Ni hiyo ndiyo inatufuata hiyo ile kazi ambayo tunafanyia Mungu. Na acha niseme kuna rewards ambazo tunapata kwa sababu ya obedience. Amen. We are continuing. We will come back. I want to read from Jeremiah chapter 42 verse 6 says, whether it's pleasing or displeasing, we will obey the voice of the Lord to whom he is he, to whom we send he send you and that it shall be well with you. The Bible says that uh, whether maybe you are, it's convenient for you to pay the, the Lord, or it's not convenient, you have to obey if you want it to be well with you. Because uh, when we obey, 
God makes things uh, that maybe are against us to cool. Yen mamba boy na luka kinyume nasi, mungu anayafanya na anayakuwa sawa katika maisha yetu. Kumarisha ya kwamba kile mungu anayangalia ni ya kwamba tuti, ata wakati unasikia ya kwamba utaki kuti. Ata wakati unasikia ya kwamba mamba yedi vizuri, inaenda kinyume na wewe, you have to obey. Ili mungu ingilie kati, alete ushindi katika maisha yako. Example ni job, ambari kutia mambo mazito, lakini uh, this man of God stood and obeyed God. He chose to obey God. Hata wakati mabe nikuwa mazito kwa ke, na tunana ya kwamba mungu aliushidania na mwisho wake mungu alibulipa marabufu katika china na isu. Amen. So you have a choice to make. Choose to obey God and eat the good of the land or choose to, to disobey God and suffer the consequences. The choice is yours. When we come back again next week, we'll continue with this same topic. We will share with you the consequences of disobedience and the blessings of obedience. Hallelujah. There is a partition between the two. You can see. Giza na nuru. Kwaibyo njuma mijano kachonjo sababu tutaweka wazi wazi. Utaona wewe eda uko. Utaona uko upande upi. Lakini kwa sasa tunasikuambia chagua kuti kwa sababu kuti ni bora kuliko sadaka na utakapoti utakula mema ya inchi ni chaguoni lako. Hallelujah. Mana mungu anabakia kuwa yule yule habadiliki jana leo na hata milele na ahadi ni zile zile uwezo na nguvu na mamlaka ni zile zile chaguoni lako. Amesema ameweka mbele yako tagua leo. Kwa hivyo chaguoni lako Mungu akubariki tunakupenda tutakuona tena uh, Jumamosi ijayo Mungu akipenda amani ya Bwana iwe pamoja nawe. Baba tunawakabidhi watazamaji wetu mikononi mwako. Siku ya leo Bwana tumewaomba na tumewaambia watagwe kutii. Tunaomba Bwana uwape roho ya kutii ili wapate kukutii kwa mambo makubwa na mambo madogo kwa maana tunajua kwamba chatu ndogo uchachua donge nzima bwana wakutii kama inavyopaswa wafuate mfano wa kristo sababu kristo alikutii hadi kifo cha msalaba baba tunakushukuru sababu sisi umetufunulia na tumechagua kutii tunazidi kuomba uzituzidishie neema yako ili tuzidi kukutii siku baada ya siku ili jina lako lisifiwe bwana na utukufu wote na enzi na ufalme na mamlaka ziwe ni zako milele daima mapenzi yako yafanyike maisha ni mwetu kama jinsi ilivyo juu mbinguni kwa sababu tumeomba na kuamini katika jina safi la Yesu Kristo aliye bwana na mkombozi wetu amen amen tunawapenda amani ya bwana iwe pamoja nanyi amen